Hi, and welcome to episode 4 of this Automobilistas Who Track Guide series. This time I wanted to look at something that only AMS2 can offer us sim racers, so I thought it'd be nice to look at the interesting and unique Corvelo Short. Let's talk about it. Yeah, a circuit so interesting that um, <laughs> even with the correct version of the Brazilian stock car, this combination hasn't even been attempted on time trial yet. So I find it quite odd because it's a really, really interesting circuit with um, tricky corners and interesting flow and a lot of elevation changes as well. So um, yeah, I think it's great. So let's look a little bit deeper. As usual, we're running a default date, 2 p.m. and on a green track. So the 1st of April means that we're running in sort of late summer, early autumn for Brazil. As ever, we're going to reset the setup so it's a default and then put 60 litres into the car, the car being the 2019 version of the Brazilian stock car. The setup changes that we're going to make will look very different from previous videos, so we're actually going to go up on rear downforce by one click, and we're going to go up on rear anti-roll bar as well, we're going to stiffen it by five clicks this time. We're going to reduce the brake pressure to 85% and then increase brake ducts to 70 and 60 front and rear. Now, the combination of car, track and conditions makes absolute lunch of the tyres, particularly at the rear. So we're going to reduce the rear camber angle to minus 1.8. We can increase the front camber angle to minus 3.4, but we also want to reduce the rear toe so it's at positive 0.1 degrees. And we can also reduce the radiator opening to 65%. So yeah, as I mentioned, tyres are a real problem, so unsurprisingly, the early laps of the hot stint were the best, so we're going to look at... Oh, nice exit, mate. Um, <laughs> we're going to look at lap one and lap two. Lap two is actually the quickest lap in the entire stint, so um, yeah, here we go. Now, the start-finish straight is the only real straight on this circuit, um, so we want to look left, and just before the service road ends, we want to brake, trailing off gently down into third gear, give it a little bit of gas before braking again down into second gear for the left-hander. Now, this is a really, really long triple apex left-hander into this absolutely insane street-style cut-through. So yeah, keep it in third for better traction, and if you correctly nip the apex on the right, you can start turning left and also getting on the power straight away so that our exit speed is maximized as we rejoin the full layout of the circuit. We're now approaching the left right called the fish hook. Great name, by the way. Um, we want to break before the 50 board down into third gear and trail off really gently. If we go into this corner too hot, we'll lose the rear over the rise. And for this long right, you want to keep it in third gear. But if you do happen to clip the grass on the inside, it's actually going to help with rotation. So feel free to exploit that. Coming up to the Jaguar tail, we want to break basically at the 50 meter board, gently guide the car into the left, but then sling it into the right. The compression on the apex will help the car grip up. We're looking for the 50 meter board once again for north 12 corner. We want to break down into third gear, gently swing the car in and sort of treat the corner like a late apex. Uh, and then once again, we want to break, leave it in third gear this time and just use the throttle to keep the revs up because if the engine bogs down, you'll get some very extreme engine braking. A little confidence lift as we turn right for the boomerang. One of those corners where you want to commit early rather than late because going wide will lose you a ton of lap time and then we want to break in the middle of the service road on the left, down into second gear, again cut the inside if you like, and then you want to leave it in second gear for the final corner, the elbow, and you want to be really, really patient on throttle because it's very, very easy to lose the rear on power with these cars. Um, the final corner actually is not as tight or as slow as it looks. I think it's partly because the positive camber of the corner just gives you a bit more speed and a bit more grip. So, we're going to return the footage to normal speed as we see the fastest lap of the stint. So we want to look for the service road on the left, brake as it ends, down into third gear, gently trail the car in, a little bit of gas and then brake again, down into second, and then for this really long left-hander, upshift to third just to make sure we've got a bit more control over the car's traction. Keep it tight on exit, then swing it right, kiss the apex and once we're through the corner then you can turn left, ramp the power up slowly, so we're maximising our speed as we go back onto the main circuit. Now for the fish hook, or nzol as it's called in Portuguese, we want to brake it about 70 metres, trailing off gently as we reach third gear, into the left and then swing it into the right, keeping it in third gear. Again, if we get on the grass, no big deal. For the Jaguar tail, or Gauda da Onsa, brake just before the 50, gently guide the car through the left and then swing it sharply through the right. Uh, for North 12, or Norce Dosi, brake just before the 50, being as smooth as possible with all inputs. And then for Gemirzon e Dois, keep it in third gear and just use a trace amount of throttle just to keep the revs up all the way through. Bring the car out wide so we're opening up the boomerang. Just a little confidence lift on turn in just so the car grips up and then hard powers are through the apex. 
Brake in the middle of the service road on the left, down into second gear. Again, you can cut a little bit if you want to. Brake just as the car straightens up, and then for God the Velo, keep it in second gear, but be really, really patient on exit and slowly build up the throttle. As this is the only real straight on the circuit, uh, the exit out of the last corner is incredibly important, so it's worth prioritizing. And that wraps up a lap of Curvelo Short. And there we go. It's, um, it's quite a rapid track guide this time around. Um, because of that cut through, we're sort of missing a third of the circuit. So I'll definitely revisit this circuit at some point so we can look at the full layout with something like the Formula 3 cars. Um, just because I imagine that racing those cars around here would be amazing fun. Now, before the video closes out, I did want to address the setup changes that we made at the beginning of the video. Um, it's all well and good making these changes, but these guides are supposed to be as informative as they can possibly be, so um, it's good to know exactly why we're making these changes, so um, let's recap. Firstly, we actually increased the rear downforce by a click. Um, the reason for that is, as I mentioned in the track guide, there's only one real straight on this circuit, which is the start-finish line. So straight line speed isn't really a huge concern for us. What's more important is having better stability in third and fourth gear corners. That being said, the increase in rear downforce will also mean that the car will bias more towards understeer, so to combat that, we're then stiffening the rear anti-roll bar by five clicks. This will make the rear of the car livelier, but in terms of driving feel, it should feel a little bit more like the rear is better connected to the front of the car. This comes in really useful for all of the chicanes on this circuit because with a quick change of direction it's very easy for the outside tyre to become overloaded. So a stiffer roll bar just keeps more weight on the inside tyre and also it makes the car more compliant with quick changes of direction. It's important to note that this increase in stiffness will affect the car in all corner types whereas the downforce change will only really affect the car in high speed corners. Everything else that we did was all in the name of tyre preservation, so hopping onto the final lap of the stint. If you just have a look at the tyre wear in the bottom right, it's, I mean, it's really bad, particularly on the right-hand side. You'll notice that the tyre temperatures slowly escalate over the course of the lap, and they only really have one chance to cool down a bit, which is, again, at the start-finish line, so... If we focus on the rear of the car, that's why we reduce the rear camber and then also reduce the amount of toe angle that we have. It's basically just trying to make sure that the tyre isn't scrubbing as much and therefore the heat buildup isn't quite as severe. We did also increase the brake duct openings by two clicks at the rear and four clicks at the front. Uh, the reason for that difference is because we're running the default 60-40 brake bias and obviously with braking the weight of the car is thrown forward so the front brakes generally speaking do more work. But we were able to increase the front camber a little bit and that's just to increase the amount of grip that we have mid corner at the front of the car. The last thing that we did was actually decrease the brake pressure. Now this seems a bit counterintuitive, but I would actually recommend that if you try this combination, leave the pressure at 90%, go out and do a couple of laps, and just experience how badly the tyres suffer if you have any kind of lockup. The tyre life gets absolutely destroyed, so that's why we actually back the pressure off to 85%. It gives a little bit more leeway on the brake pedal, and also if you do experience lockups, they're going to be nowhere near as severe, and so you'll actually get away with them a bit better. And that finally wraps everything up for Cuvelo Short. Um, I hope that you found this interesting because I, I think this is a fascinating circuit, but we'll look at something a little bit more conventional in the next video. So uh, yeah, hopefully you'll join me for the next one. Uh, see you there.